I, I mean, wow. Who knew, guys? Who knew today was going to be the day? I had no clue. I was devoted, honestly. Purper for life. Am I right? But I think purper has served its purpose. Today is the day we honor purper. We give purper the respect it deserves. I know it's not the most loved building block in the game. Not even by a long shot. Some people openly hate it. But you know what? It's better than granite. Purper has been the backbone of our world here, guys. It has allowed us to reach places I never thought possible through the nether. And for that, it will always hold a special place in my heart. But we're not going to be building with it anymore. You know, times are changing and we got to change with them. Yeah, so over the past few days here, I've been doing an incredible amount of grindy work in our world here. One of the main things being building this nether tunnel out to the new Crimson Keep area we started, which is about 4,500 blocks away, which is a very, very long nether tunnel. But we had about a thousand of that built already with the purple tunnel. And I'm currently working on the final thousand block section of this 4,500 block tunnel, guys. And I can ooh, hardly wait till it's done. Because, oh my goodness, it's taken a long time. I call it my uh, tunnel to insanity. <laughs> I've also had to take a few breaks while building this because I was starting to get that carpal tunnel feeling in my, my wrist from placing so many blocks. So, I had a bit of a tough time deciding here what to do because I felt like there was three main options to choose for what to do with our nether tunnels. Number one being just continue the original purple design we had here. I wanted to stop using this because purple is actually a real pain to collect. <laughs> like you gotta, even though we got a big farm for it, you still gotta uh, smelt it, you gotta craft it, you gotta replant it, all that kind of stuff. I think the easiest way of collecting it is actually just to set up a speed mining beacon at an end fortress and just plow it down. Um, but even still, that's a lot of work. I also didn't like how I use solid glass here. That's a lot more resources compared to like using glass panes which is what we ended up upgrading to here. And also we're using three wide packed ice and packed ice is only 40 blocks per second travel speed by boat. While blue ice, what we upgraded to here is 60 blocks per second. So that's a time and a half quicker. And that is a big deal when you're going a long distance like we are here. So second option was to upgrade our tunnel, which is what we chose. But the third option is we could have just flew around the nether ceiling now, like portals connect from the nether ceiling, you don't actually need to make nether tunnels anymore. But I decided to still go with the tunnels because I wanted the blue ice. It's a faster way of traveling compared to rockets, I think, in general. And also we have the option now to carry mobs around through our nether by boat, which I think was better. While if we were flying around the roof and we want to move a mob around, we still have a big problem. So, uh, as you saw there, we need a lot of power rails. That's one of our big problems right now. And then I, this is our final thousand block stretch that I'm going to work on here. Uh, I got to go collect more blue ice right now. And you guys will be happy to know I'm not doing this in a crazy way anymore. <laughs> I've actually looked for a frozen ocean now that we can destroy and steal all the packed ice and blue ice from. It does spawn naturally here in these glaciers, although you can't instant mine it. Uh, but like with the purple tunnels, all that ice I crafted. This is also a newly generated area for me, so I got pretty excited when I saw this. This is a bamboo jungle, the very first one I found, and I was hoping we would find pandas. And I've looked through here, and I can't find any, though. Which is a little bit disappointing. I think because we're on Amplified, it messes up uh, some of the passive mob spawning. Like, they only spawn at certain levels, I'm guessing, and because most of the terrain is Amplified up high, there's very little area where mo new mobs can actually spawn. Oh well, we only need two. We'll find them eventually. I gotta say, I, I do really enjoy the amplified terrain still though. Like it's so much fun to explore this stuff. Like look at this, this, this is so cool. <laughs> and now I got a computer that can actually handle it. Whoa, uh -oh. we only got one rocket left here. We gotta make it count. Straight up. And over. And we made it. Awesome. Okay, 40 rockets. Excellent. So there's also a giant desert by that frozen ocean. So I'm probably going to make that my new 
sand mining outpost because the other one we were using is running out actually. <laughs> we're gonna smelt that up into some glass for the blue glass of the tunnels. Oh man, I'm actually pretty excited about this. It's been months, I think, since we last had to fire up our lab here. Today's the day. We're running low on potions, finally. <laughs> uh, I wish we could run this more often, but it just lasts for so long. Yeah, we used up a bunch of speed potions. Let's go through our stock here. Gotta get an idea. I don't think I've used any poison. I think we were running low on weakness. Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. What are we low on? We're low on invisibility a little bit. Used a lot of night vision. And fire resistance. Yeah, there's none left. I really like to use speed potions when I'm building because the rate of your right click when you hold it down is almost exactly the same as your movement speed when you're using a speed one potion. One problem I've been having while building this tunnel is I keep running into basalt deltas and <laughs> you get a bunch of this basalt in your way and you can't mine it very quickly and it's really annoying. Um, it's not really worth moving a speed beacon over here because it's not a super long stretch usually, just a few blocks. So I've actually been using the golden picks to uh, speed mine them. <laughs> Funny enough, I didn't think that would actually have any practical value, but uh, yeah, here I am. Oh man, oh snappers, we got it done here. We actually got it done and I am so happy. This is going to be huge for our world, having this road. Oh, man. So, it comes out at minus 1,000, minus 3,500. So, that is at our Crimson Keep area here. You might be thinking, Etho, you know, that seems a bit crazy to build a tunnel just to get to your Crimson Keep. That's not just what it's for. This gives us a big range of uh, area in our overworld that we can cover now. So, like with all our nether tunnels, we can cover over like a 50,000 block area in the overworld. So, when new content comes out in the game, there's a good chance... It's going to be reachable now. Oh yeah, and I'll give you guys a view from the outside as well. Because I think it looks pretty cool on the outside too. I'm happy with that. It's not like I'm going to build uh, support posts or anything for it though. That's getting too crazy. <laughs> uh, I wanted to try to keep the tunnel as simple as I could while still keeping it as detailed as I could. So it's just five blocks tall. So that's ten. And then three connecting on the top and bottom. So that's sixteen blocks every one block of space you want to move forward. Um... More detailed tunnels obviously will look better, but that adds so much more work every single block you add to it. Yeah, so I said it's done, but it's not actually done. We're missing the power rails for about 2,000 blocks of the tunnel right now. So we got to get those somehow. Um, and as you can see, they are super important. <laughs> because without them, you get mobs spawning on the tunnel on the ice here. And that means we need gold, everybody. Lots and lots of gold for the power rails. Uh oh he's getting out. <laughs> uh, we could just use gold farm number three. We recently fixed that up and it is working again. But um, I got to thinking, what about gold farm number two, guys? This could be one of the most perfect projects we could ever do, actually. So let me try to explain this to you. Gold farm number two here is actually broken. It broke a long time ago because some game mechanics changed before we had some iron golems in here. We just manually spawn them in, and they would attack the zombie pigmen. Uh, and the zombie pigmen weren't able to hurt the iron golem before, so they would just kill all the zombie pigmen. Now, oh, they're gonna turn on me. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Uh, yeah, now the pigmen kill it pretty quickly, and then there's no more iron golems, right? And farm's broken. Now, the other side to all of this is we also desperately need an iron farm in our world. Our snowflake one broke a while ago, and I've just been cannibalizing beacon bases lately to get our iron, but that's going to run out pretty soon, so we need something. Uh, so how perfect is this, right? We need iron, we need gold. Why don't we just set up some villagers here? They'll spawn in iron golems on the platform. They don't spawn on glass, so this is all fine. They should spawn on the platform, I believe. And the iron golems will fight the zombie pigmen. The zombie pigmen will fight the iron golems. And we'll get both. <laughs> and we'll be fixing an old broken project in the process. So it's like three birds and one stone, right? And the crazy thing is, there was actually two villagers here just sitting here. Because, uh, like, when you punch a zombie pigmen, sometimes they would spawn zombies. And I think uh, a couple of them were zombie villagers. I cured them just because I was bored and... Yeah, so we can start up a village pretty easily here, I think. 
And these villagers are from before the villager changes, and I suspect this might be another cheat, though. Because <laughs> uh, just says cleric, it doesn't say rank or anything up here. Well, this guy says leather worker journeyman, so I'm a, I suspect we can trade infinitely with this guy. Let's try to get these guys out of here. He's got a gold rank. So I'm trying to get him up on the roof here. And he's going on his own pretty well. Yeah, we're going to get him on the roof, and we're going to start up a village up there. Enjoy. Oh, that guy stole it. Ah, oh, I missed it. I left for a moment to grab some stuff, and when I came back, they had a baby villager already. Amazing. So all they need is a bed, a workstation, and food. We've been feeding them bread, so they can make babies. Oh, we got baby. We got baby. Baby? Yeah, we got a little one. Nice. Can I sleep here? Oh my goodness, you can sleep by a gas? <laughs> what? That shouldn't be. I'll take it though. Alright. Heading back. So I've been uh, skipping the night by going to the overworld. Because obviously you can't sleep in the nether, right? And they won't breathe during the nighttime. So to save a bit of time while making this project... I run, run to the overworld there, sleep, and then uh, when I come back, they should start making babies again. Very good, very good. So it looks like we're up to seven or eight villagers here already. They're breeding pretty quickly, actually. Kind of in a race with them. I wanted to set up my part before uh, they were finished. <laughs> so what I've done is I found the center point, which is right here of this platform. Then I went out diagonally from there until it looked like we had about 20-something block space from one end to the other and looks like we have space to do eight villager cells pretty comfortably here so we're gonna go villager cell zombie villager cell villager cell zombie villager cell villager cell zombie villager cell you get the idea right so in the villager cells we put three villagers each so three times eight means we need 24 villagers for this farm and we need to have at least a 10 block space between the villager cells. Otherwise, like, one of them will spawn in an iron golem and they'll be like, Hey guys, you're pretty close to us. You don't need to worry about spawning in one yourself, right? But if they're at least 10 blocks apart from each other, they'll both spawn in iron golems and we'll get eight at a time here uh, in the farm. So if we count it, one, two, three, four, five, six blocks to the zombie. One, two, three, four, five six blocks to the next villager cell so that's at least a 10 block space between the villagers so that should be good and then from here from this villager cell to that one we got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve to this one so again we have a 10 block space all right well i think we're ready to get started here and this is going to be so easy for us to build because all the hard work is done we got the platform we got the collection system underneath that we got this glass cover <laughs> all we got to do is build the villager cells and get some zombies up here um so villager cells go in here and i should warn you this is not pre-built and creative so it might not work we will find out i gotta be very careful not to right click a bed as well as i'm doing this or i'm gonna be very sad <laughs> So I think we need the pillow part facing the the villagers. Um, and we want to surround this now with some glass. This is the Etho custom cell. Let's see if it works or not. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm going to cover over there. And we got to make sure when they wake up out of the bed, they don't spawn outside here on the ground. So I'm going to build up here. I think I need to. And possibly outside here as well. Well, no, I think they spawn from the pillow block, not the not, not the foot. So the, everything else around that's surrounded. We will put glass over top of this as well. And then we just got to make sure the villagers can't get out. So we're going to put some slabs in front. They'll bump their head on that. And then we need to make sure... Nothing spawns on top of this, so we're going to put more slabs over top here, just to cover the whole thing. Although they don't spawn, nothing spawns on glass, so we don't really need to put it above that. I'm going to do it anyway. 
Okay. And I think that's pretty much all there is to it. Although I realized stuff might spawn on top of these workstations. So I'm going to put some redstone on top of them. That stops mobs from spawning. Could use power rails as well or something like that. Uh, but that should be good, I think. I don't think that blocks the villagers from using the workstation. I could be wrong. <laughs> Again, I don't really know a lot about uh, the mechanics of this. But uh, just the, the basics. So the zombie's going to go in his cage over here. He'll be able to see the villagers. Villagers will be able to see him, and they're going to freak out. They're going to panic. And then they're going to spawn iron golems up to six blocks be below them and above them. And six blocks below them just happens to be a platform where we want them. Time for school. Time to wake up. Let's go. Let's go. And actually, I don't even need to move them into the cell if we just block them in there. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's going to be so easy. Well, I learned something new while building this. I did not know... For villagers to breed, they need not only a bed, a workstation, and food, they also need two air spaces above the beds for the baby villagers to jump on. Uh, otherwise, they don't see it as a valid bed. So we covered over the beds here, and I could not figure out for like an hour <laughs> why the villagers totally stopped breeding. Um, it's because we had glass above the beds here. So now that they're done breeding, we got enough villagers, these are all full now. I'm going to cover over them again. Okay, good stuff. So the night passed here and all the villagers woke up inside their cells, not outside. Because when they get out of bed, they look all around the bed uh, for a free space. And this is the only free space available to them over here. Um, so that's good. Uh, I got rid of some of the slabs over top here because I thought it might look better actually. Seeing more glass. And I got like a platform up there to view everything now. And now it's time for the tricky part. <laughs> We gotta get a zombie. So I'm gonna leave the area. I want those gas gone, first off. Okay, let's try this again. <laughs> Alright, I have a I have a new plan now. Um, I realized... We gotta go in here, we gotta cover up all this glowstone, because we need zombies to spawn. And they don't spawn in light areas. So, it needs to be dark in here, actually. Okay, so I'm going to keep punching him here, and I'm hoping... Yeah, there we go. We got a zombie. Sweet. So we want to try to get a zombie that will pick up items. Dude! <laughs> he stole all the gold! Give it back. Is that going to be a problem with this farm, actually? I wonder. Those guys might steal all the gold that lands on the ground. Before the minecart can grab it. Oh, he grabbed the sword. Okay, that's a zombie we can use. So, a zombie that picks up an item won't despawn. So, we, if we put him in a holding area here, he'll stay there forever. Uh, zombies also prefer to kill you over the villagers. You take priority, so they're going to ignore the villagers as long as I'm here. And... Oh, he was so close. Come on, you can do it. Guy. Oh, he won't walk over, really. Put that there. And Whoa, you're ninja! How did you do that, guy? No, don't, don't. Oh, come on, man. You're killing me here. What if I put this here? Ah, we figured it out. Okay, we got him in there. All right, here we go. The final zombie. Then we got four. Block it, and then we slab it. Then we slab it. There we go. <laughs> then we're free to remove all this stuff, and he is... He is stuck in there. Good. Okay, so we got everything built that I wanted to do here, but now comes the bug fixing. So I've been watching it, and it's very strange. So we just got an iron golem spawn there. Uh, it's supposed to spawn eight at a time, I thought. We got another one. But it's sort of sporadic. Like, it'll spawn an iron golem, then like five seconds later another one will spawn. Sometimes there'll be three, sometimes there'll be four. I think what we got to do is add some redstone controls so that the villagers see the zombie all at the same time. All right, all the villagers just went to bed here. I'm going to try flip the switch so that the zombies scare them. Oh, except for you. Please go to bed. It's bedtime. Go to bed. All right, well, let's let's see what happens anyway. <laughs> here we go. Oh, iron golems. Yeah. One, two... Only two. Three. It's supposed to be eight. Why is it not eight? 
Hmm. Alright, I guess let's try this again. I got a lot to learn about iron golem farms, apparently. Um, how many are we gonna get here, if any? None? Why would we get none? Oh man, this is so confusing. I don't know what's going on here. The mechanics are so strange. Three, four, five, six. Okay, that was a good one. We got at least six iron golems. Three, six. Was it only six or was there eight? We're trying to get eight. Four, five, six. I'm only seeing six. Hmm. All right, well, I think that's all we're gonna do with this for today. I know it's not perfect, <laughs> but uh, uh, I know I can just read the comments after this episode and somebody's probably gonna give me the answer to this. So that's a lot easier than trying to figure it out. Um, so thank you in advance for that. <laughs> uh, but I, I did see eight spawn at once, so there's definitely potential here. I think that means the cells are spaced properly. There's just some other mechanic in play that I don't understand. Um, I know you're supposed to drop iron golems like 16 blocks away from villagers. We can't really do that with this project because we're at the top of the roof here. Um, so that might lower our iron rates a little bit because we're not doing that, but I don't think it should be a big deal, but I could be wrong. Uh, the way this works is we put in some filters here for what items we want to collect. Then when a hopper minecart passes by those, it grabs one of each, and then it goes underneath the farm and grabs all the stuff. That way it doesn't grab any of the swords or, or poppies or anything else that you might not want to collect. All right, and I just checked in what we got so far with the farm, and it's definitely producing a bit, uh, quite a bit of iron here already. Seven, uh, eight, nine, kind of about nine stacks of iron so far. I think one or two of those are from the filter that I supplied myself, so probably seven or so stacks. How many is out of here? A stack and a half is missing. So I have to manually put this stuff in here with the way I got the farm set up. Uh, but it lasts for quite a few hours before you have to refill. Um, but yeah, it's it's going to give us gas tears. It's going to give us gold. We got quite a bit of gold here too. We could get eight, eight iron golems spawning at once every single time. Um, that's like eight every minute, I think. Then uh, it's going to really start producing. And I think once we get all the mechanics working good on this farm, I'm also going to turn it into a villager trading post. Because we got 24 villagers here. They are on ground level, so I can interact with them and, and trade with them. So I may as well. That way it'll be like three things in one. Iron farm, gold farm, and trading post. Oh yeah, and before we leave here, I did want to check if this guy's a cheat though. <laughs> which means, uh, basically he doesn't have a limit to how many times you can trade with him. Uh, 16, 17, oh yeah, he's cheat though. So normally I think you're limited to 16 trades and we just did 20 there. And he didn't have to restock. I am kind of curious what happens if you cure one of these guys. If the prices drop and you can still do that. <laughs> then it becomes like super cheap though. And you trade like one flesh for an emerald. With no restock time. Kind of tempted to do that. But that might be too cheap though. Oh yeah and I thought of a new name for the farm as well. So rather than just calling it gold farm number two like we've been doing. <laughs> oh even though that's a lovely name. I thought we would call it the Goon Farm, which is gold and iron. First two letters of gold, last two letters of iron. Huh? <laughs> I like it. I think that's good. Oh man, here we go, guys. This is the big moment. Last episode, you noticed that uh, we were about to hit day 10,000 in our world here. Day 10,000 since the statistics worked anyways. <laughs> it's actually a lot older than that. Uh, but yeah, here we go. We have finally hit day 10,154. <laughs> so, kind of went past it by uh, quite a bit. I actually missed the when it rolled over. Um, so, I've actually played a ton since last episode here. Uh, a big chunk of that was building the nether tunnel, but I've also been doing a lot of other stuff. You stole my door. You jerk. Oh my goodness. So, some of you guys told me to flip them. Yeah, we trick them. So this is... You, see, you hear the open sound? That's an open door. That's a closed door. So the open door should get ignored by the zombies, apparently. 
Aha, uh -huh. so you guys might be wondering about those 150 plus days <laughs> since uh, last episode. Um, I'm trying to go through a major shift with our Let's Play series here. We're, we're doing things here. Uh, lots of off-camera work is being done. Uh, essentially, I'm trying to update things for one thing. Trying to get things running smoother. Like, for example, one of the things I did here is I got a villager in the stall like we were supposed to. I cured him. So his trades are only cost one emerald, and he has mending, which is something I've needed for a long time. My other villager that has this, it costs like 30 emeralds or something crazy. And, uh, you know, just simple things like that around the world makes it a lot easier for me to get stuff done. And another pretty big thing I did is I went on an end raiding run recently. I explored three more of these map sections, these 2,000 block maps. Uh, got a bunch more shulker boxes. I was lacking them. It was kind of hard moving stuff around because I didn't have enough free ones available. Now we got quite a few more. I think I found like over a stack of shulker shells. Um, although I've kind of used them all up already. <laughs> I also spent quite a bit of time reorganizing my ender chest and the system I use for it. So, for example, look how beautiful this is. Fences. Every single fence in the game right there. <laughs> available. Oh, nether stuff. Oh, look how beautifully organized that is. I love it. So that's going to simplify things quite a bit for me. So I'm actually pretty serious about there being a major shift in the Let's Play series. Like, usually with these episodes, I just hop on and I do what I feel like doing for that episode. And it's pretty random and, and crazy, right? Um, I actually have a plan, guys. I have a plan. I think for the next 50 episodes, roughly, I have a pretty big chunk of them figured out already. <laughs> Which is going to be very different. Um, we're still going to be doing random stuff mixed in, I'm sure, but uh, for the next 10 here, I'm hoping for the world tour and world download coming up at episode 550. We're going to be ready for it. We're going to finish up some projects here, fix up some things, and also I want to organize the world a bit better. So, like, it would be nice to have signs that tell you what's where, how stuff works, that sort of thing. I noticed when people check out my world, they're actually really confused a lot of the time, which isn't really what I want. Uh, I would like them to be able to find things and uh, understand things, right? So I'm going to put an effort into that. And we're going to be doing nether stuff in between as well, I'm hoping. Then sometime after episode 550 is when we're going to start the major special project. I don't want to overhype it. I don't want to give too much away right now. But I got something massive planned um, that's going to be like the main feature of our world, I think. So, pretty excited about that. I want to start it today, but I'm holding off. <laughs> I'll give myself more time to plan it out, and it'll hopefully be better. Aha! Uh -huh. So, in line with that goal, this episode, we did do some nether stuff. We built the nether tunnel, and we fixed up a broken project, the gold farm number two, and made something new out of it. So, that is pretty cool. But the, probably the second biggest thing I did besides the nether tunnel is I worked on fixing up the broken pumpkin and... Uh, brown mushroom farm we had. Yeah, so the pumpkin farm was broken because before, a pumpkin would grow in front of the piston like that, and that would block out the light from reaching the daylight sensor, which would cause this to trigger and activate the piston, breaking the pumpkin and letting light through again. Um, that was when light would pass through pistons, which isn't the case anymore, so this piston would get stuck after that update and uh, couldn't grow any more pumpkins. Now the new system that we upgraded to here is pumpkin grows in front of the piston under the note block. That updates the note block, which observer detects, powers this block here, which powers the piston diagonally, and we update the piston with the power rail down below here. Now it's important to keep in mind, if you are building a farm like this, it does not work with melons. <laughs> that is because uh, melons don't actually change the notes on the note block still piano while pumpkins uh huh awesome so this is a new fully upgraded pumpkin and brown mushroom farm with the new mechanics whenever a pumpkin grows it triggers uh huh I put glass over top here now as well as having some issues where mobs would spawn here and they would trample the, the crops now they can't do that and we also did a few aesthetic things around here so we added some lights some some lanterns here with the chain block we added posts before this was all floating and it didn't look very good. Uh, we got rid of the regular dark oak and we stripped it all. 
and added some rings around each of the mushroom plants here. And the idea with the trap doors here, I haven't tried them out yet, but uh, we were having mushrooms that were staggered in their height. <laughs> well, some were a block taller than others. That's because they don't uh, require an air block above them anymore. That was a change as well. So now that that's uh, fixed up with the trap doors, let's try press to grow. And they're all at the same height now, which is amazing. It'll be a lot easier to collect them. Uh, this is what it looks like at nighttime here. Oh, yeah, I think that's supposed to happen. <laughs> it's like, what was that noise? I don't remember there being more pistons. So yeah, we did the outside here too with the lanterns. So it's it's pretty nice around here. Anyways, let's get to the comment of the day, guys. It's time to wrap up for today. It says, why is your Twitch in your bio or description if the last time you were live was over four years ago? <laughs> uh, I get asked this question a lot, and it's actually for a good reason. Uh, number one, it's actually a few reasons. Number one, I would say uh, it looks pretty good. Like if you're trying to get partnered on Twitch and you have like 100,000 followers because people are still signing up. And you've never streamed before you can be like hey twitch do right, you mind partnering me I, I got a lot of followers and they'll be like oh yeah for sure <laughs> I, I am actually partnered but i think i have to get repartnered if, if i ever want to start streaming again so there's that uh second reason it's to help protect against imposters so people like to start up channels or things similar in name of to me and pretend to be me so how do you know who is the official etho who's the real guy while well, you're watching this video what's linked with this video. My Twitter, my Twitch, you know those are the accurate ones and no, no others. So if you see me on Instagram, for example, I don't have that linked in my channel description. That's not me. <laughs> I don't have an Instagram. But anyways, thank you for the question. Thank you for the comments, everybody. I appreciate it. To finish off today, we are going to head into the statistics because I got to <laughs> I gotta firmly plant myself as the leader of the most Blackstone ever mined. I think I'm in the lead at the moment. World record here, probably. 28,436. I could be wrong. Somebody might have done more. But I have a hunch. That's that's the world record at the moment. Basalt, we're at 20,743. And yeah. I thought this was kind of cool, too. Um, passed over a million on the diamond pick. I think this got reset at some point as well, though. Because it seems kind of low, some of these stats. Like, I, I, it says I never used quartz pillars, I saw. And I know I've used them on the Nexus, so I don't know. <laughs> Netherite pick is at 121,000 already. Um, but also, Redstone, I think, is in the top 10 blocks used, which I thought was kind of funny. <laughs> uh huh. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Thank you for watching. Until next time, take care. Have a good day. Bye bye.